Why do so many heat pumps cost more to run than they should, even when the installation looks pretty good? I've been running Renewable Heating Hub for 5 years now, and for most of that time I've been trying to get one point across. Heat pumps don't save energy by switching off. They save energy by running efficiently and comfortably. And in a lot of cases, that efficiency and comfort live or die on one setting, weather compensation. It's the feature that links what your heat pump is doing to the outside temperature. It's not new, it's not experimental, it's been around for a long time in boilers, and it's not a workaround. And despite that, it's still disabled, misset, or ignored in a staggering number of homes. So let's briefly start with what weather compensation actually does. A heat pump doesn't decide its output based on how hot your radiators feel. It decides based on flow temperature, the temperature of the water it sends around your entire system. Weather compensation simply uses the outdoor temperature to choose what that flow temperature should be. So when it's cold outside, the system simply raises the flow temperature, and when it's mild, it lowers it. That matters a lot because heat pumps are most efficient when the flow temperature is low. Every degree lower improves efficiency, and every unnecessary degree costs you more money. But this isn't just about efficiency. Correctly set, weather compensation delivers steadier temperatures, smaller room-to-room -room variations, and often a more comfortable home than on-off heating ever can. This is why low and slow works, not blasting heat into the house, but instead maintaining a steady level of heat that closely matches the building's heat loss. Think cruise control, not stop-start at traffic lights. Now here's the part most people never see. Weather compensation isn't a switch, it's a curve, which immediately sounds more complicated than it actually is. So let's imagine a graph. Along the bottom is the outdoor temperature. Up the side is the flow temperature. Draw a sloping line between the two. That line tells the heat pump what flow temperature to use at different outdoor temperatures, and that essentially is the weather compensation curve. Move the line up, and the system runs hotter across the board. Move it down, and everything runs cooler. Change the steepness, and you change how aggressively the system responds to colder weather. Once you understand that, you've got a pretty good grasp of weather compensation. Now at this point you might be thinking, that all sounds great, but how do I actually change my curve? Because my installer didn't show me how. So here's the good news. Every heat pump controller looks different, but they all do the same thing. Somewhere in the menus, often buried, sometimes labeled unhelpfully or hidden behind a password, you'll find the weather compensation settings. The first is a curve number or slope value. The higher the number, the steeper the curve. The lower the number, the flatter the curve. The second is usually a pair of temperatures, one for cold weather, one for mild weather. For example, flow temperature at minus three outside and flow temperature at 15 degrees. And most of the time, all you have to do is shift the curve slightly. Up if the house is cold, down if the house is too warm. If your controller shows temperatures, the logic is exactly the same. Lower the cold weather flow temperature by a degree or two. Live with it, see how the house feels. If comfort stays the same, you've just improved efficiency. If comfort drops, raise it back up slightly. And if your controller warns you that you're entering an advanced menu, good. That's probably where the weather compensation features live. So why is this set so poorly so often? The reason is because curves are frequently set once, on the installation day, and then they're never revisited. Sometimes they're based on calculations, sometimes they're based on the installer's habit, but rarely are they based on how the house actually behaves once people are living in it. And as I've said countless times across these videos, real homes don't match calculations. They have drafts, sunlight, cooking, people. Weather compensation needs to be set after you've lived with the system for a period of time. So here's the correct way of doing it. Wait for a properly cold spell. The colder, the better. This is when the system is under maximum load and when the curve becomes meaningful. Set the heat pump to run 24-7 because weather compensation works best with continuous operation, not on-off heating. If you have them on your system, make sure that all of your TRVs are open to the max. You want the weather compensation controlling the system, not room-by-room -room switching. Now lower the weather compensation curve. Do it gradually. As you lower it, the house will eventually become slightly too cool. That's the point. Because the lowest curve that still keeps your house comfortable is the most efficient and most stable curve for your property. Yes, the system will take longer to warm up if it's gone off, but that's to be expected. Once you get to the point where the house starts to feel too cool, raise the curve slightly. One small step up, then leave it alone for a day or two. If the house stays comfortable, you found your perfect curve. And once it's been set properly, for most homes it can now generally be left alone. Now let's quickly touch on the radiator problem. When weather compensation is working properly, radiators will not always feel hot. On mild days, they may feel barely warm or even cool to the touch. That's normal. That's the system doing exactly what it should. But this is where things often go wrong. Homeowners touch a rad, feel it's not hot, and assume that something is broken. The installer gets a call, and to avoid future callbacks, weather compensation gets turned off or completely overridden. I've even seen installers set fixed flow temperatures at 45 degrees or higher, 
Now radiators feel hot again, but efficiency and comfort disappear. So here's a simple test. If your radiators feel the same temperature, whether it's zero or 10 degrees outside, weather compensation isn't working. Either it's off or the curb is set way too high. A working system reacts to the weather and you should be able to feel that change over time. It's also important to point out that you shouldn't be judging your performance hour by hour. Heat pumps are designed to maintain steady comfort, not deliver bursts of heat. They're terrible sprinters, but they're excellent marathon runners. So avoid on-off scheduling and use gentle setbacks instead, because lowering the curve slightly overnight is far more efficient than turning the system off completely. And weather compensation that's been set correctly is not something you should need to constantly tweak. For most homes, a well-set weather compensation curve on its own provides the best comfort and lowest running costs. And if you're still struggling, please visit the Renewable Heating Hub forums where we'll help you demystify it. So that's a wrap for today's episode. If you've got an idea for a future episode or you want me to investigate something specific in the world of heat pumps, please email me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.